I have, uh, in the course of my career, I have worked with a lot of interns. And it is the newspapers that grab these interns. They tell me repeatedly, I've had this n numbers, uh, numbers of times, that they in most enjoyed reading the newspapers. Um, they like the accounts. They, uh, they also get into the, the advertisements and uh, the, you know, the other elements of the newspapers. The other thing is, keep in mind that newspapers at that time were not like newspapers today in the sense that you did not have paid correspondence. What they were is first-person accounts that were being sent back. Somebody would see a, a witness an event, be a part of an event, would sit down and write a letter back to, say, his brother or his friend, and then a part of that letter, I mean, usually you wouldn't get, dear mom, send me the socks, but a part of the letter that they thought was newsworthy would go to the local printer. And so when you hear about battles, you'll get you know, a letter from an officer at camp, uh, which is their kind of stock phrase. They wouldn't identify who these people were, but you get really first-person accounts. Lord Richard Howe would send notes back to the Secretary of the Admiralty, uh, Philip Stevens, and you could see Stevens would mark uh, in the, the margin of these letters, print this, print this, print this, and it was, he would delineate exactly what sections were to be printed in the, or sent to the newspapers for publication. And you also get a sense of the mood. Uh, when John Paul Jones uh, attacked the English coast, I mean, the English were concerned and upset enough that that comes through the newspaper reports. Uh, you get the same kind of thing from these letters. I mean, you can see if they th feel things are going well or if they feel things are going uh, badly. So you're kind of inside of them much more than you would be a third-person observer who's trying to remain above the fray and st stay to totally neutral. The other thing is it's history as process. In the midst of a campaign, you'll get a letter. The, a little further along, or in the midst of a debate in Congress, you'll, you'll get something sent to the, to the press. And if, so it's not a done deal. It's not a little snippet that gives you the whole story. And finally, uh, they did print uh, rather extensively uh, debates, uh, essays, those kinds of things, so you can really see uh, the, the, really, the logic of it the, and work through as they were doing what was going on as opposed to getting a you know, two-sentence snippet where it's, okay, here, here is the decision, uh, but you don't see how they came to that decision. The newspapers then are much better at showing you the process or showing you the deliberative process that went into, say, a, a trial or a court-martial or a, 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 the passage of an act or the Articles of Confederation, something, like, something fundamental like that. So I think all of those are elements of the newspapers that uh, you, you see at those times. And like I said, some of the... Uh, the interns would really get into the advertisements to see the kinds of products that were being asked of people or seeing advertisements for runaways, uh, runaway slaves or runaway indentured servants and the descriptions. So it's, it's a good slice of social history as well.